today on Locked On Rockies. Another painfully obvious example of how the Rockies desperately need a closer. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the third day of July in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day is talking Rockies baseball free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can fire off your Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies there. And uh, every time you like a video, every time you subscribe, every time you check out the content, you are helping out the show big time, big time, big time. So please go out and check us out over there on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel and hang out with us there. And uh, let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. Uh, Today on the Locked on Rockies podcast, we will, of course, be talking about the Rockies for the seventh time this season losing a game in which they had a lead in the ninth inning and how badly this team needs a closer. I mean, it has just been, man, it it doesn't even, and even with that, it it is just, uh, the fact of the matter is there's a lot to that, this game from last night, that last night was everything wrong with the Rockies in 2024 on full display. And uh, I'll explain that and more coming up all on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Uh, before we dive into everything, just want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So last night's game, and it, it, it's it's it starts here when if your starter gives you the quality start, especially Ryan Feltner, who has struggled at home immensely, and you're going up against a pitcher that has not been good, and and, and the Rockies were able to to get some 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 momentum going, you got to put that game away earlier. My before we dive into the frustration of the bullpen, you you got to dive into the fact that this Rockies team, when you when you look at uh, the the key contributors, when you look at the players that the Rockies needed to count on in that game yesterday, they 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 can't. And it, and because I I say that because Tovar two strikeouts, McMahon two strikeouts, Nolan Jones two strikeouts. Michael Tolia and Elias Diaz and Brendan Rodgers also end the day with strikeouts there as well. But we can't be having multi-strikeout games from those three guys in the same game. It, it, it Plain and simple, that can't be happening. When when the, 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 the most frustrating part of the offensive struggles and the offensive approach for the Colorado Rockies right now is these strikeouts. And then when these players, and I know Ryan McMahon has had the strikeouts, and I know Nolan Jones has had the strikeouts, uh, but when those players... When they struggle like that, when they are striking out, when they aren't contributing, you see how much the Rockies offense struggles. The Rockies offense in this game does plate three runs thanks to Brenton Doyle staying hot. But at the same time, they weren't getting enough from the key contributors. Nolan Jones doesn't get a hit in yesterday's game. Ezekiel Tovar is held hitless. Ryan McMahon only has the one hit. The Rockies need more from those guys. And there were multiple opportunities where the Rockies had runners in scoring position. The team was one for six with t- with runners in scoring position and left 10 people on base yesterday. It, it shows you how critical those runs are and how much how it's needed to be able to, to, to drive in and one, the Rockies need those players to be the contributors. And it's it's especially frustrating too because I know Nolan Jones is still coming back and figuring out, but it, he he looks pretty far from where he was last year, in terms of just being being confident at the dish, being able to do that. the The league has the league adjusted to Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones needs to adjust to the league. Nolan Jones is batting one eighty nine with a two ninety five three fifteen right now, uh, average OBP and slugging. 
And I know he's been hurt for a good chunk of that. I know he's been rehabbing a good chunk of that. But at the same time, you can't we can't keep having games where it's multi strikeouts from the, the the key guys, the clutch guys. And, 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 and that's the biggest problem. The Rockies just lack of clutch, the Rockies lack of clutch hitting the Rockies lack of, 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 of ability to, to, to bounce back in some of these instances. I mean, this is a team where you, you go up and you score and you hang some good numbers on, on, you know, the number two in the, the Brewers rotation. And then Dallas Keuchel is the one that comes in and, and, and handles business where the Rockies looked like they, they were, they had some stuff brewing against him when they were getting runners on, but they aren't able to capitalize. The Rockies got six walk. The, the Rockies drew six walks yesterday on top of uh, getting seven hits. You should be able to score more in those situations. You, you got to be able to capitalize in that situation, especially when your defense and your pitching has, uh, has backed you up and held you into the, the Brewers go four for 15 with runners in scoring position uh, with 12 left on base. And when you really think about those, the, the runs that they, they, that did score with runners in scoring position, you have to consider that it was the, the go ahead run was a walk, which, Oh boy. We're going to have to just dive into that. We'll have to fully dive into that here in, in, in the second segment, the bullpen here, but because that's really the biggest problem on top of this. I mean, you know, the, the, the this is a one run game. The Rockies w- did have the lead. The Rockies were able to, to get some people on base. The Rockies did have a lot of people get hits in this game. Elias Diaz, even though he can't run, is able to, uh, you know, picks up a couple. Brenton Doyle, of course, stays hot. Jacob Stallings hits his second career triple. So there were there were a couple pockets and there were a couple of moments there that was looking like the Rockies were sitting pretty here again against the Brewers. But then it's the reality. It's the reality of the of this team is he is of 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 no clutch, no big moment. I mean, the, there was the big defensive play, right? There was Nolan Jones with the the huge cannon to get the the the, the out at the dish, which is exactly what you're looking for from the defense. And, and and stuff like that but it's not enough <laughs> right i mean that's the thing for the rockies they have to play the perfect ball game to win and by and win by tooth and nail i mean this is another one run game but uh, that the rockies are playing in here this is another close game that the rockies are playing in here but unfortunately it's not enough and 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 the the big focus is the 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 bullpen's inability to hold on to leads in the ninth, of course. But when I look at these offensive numbers, and when I look at the the starting pitcher for the the Brewers, I still get disappointed. This is a a, a, a Dallas Keuchel with uh with a six point seven five ERA, a Dallas Keuchel that 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 allowed two walks in that, and and also the home run and and four uh, and uh, and four hits, two two earned runs. I saw the Rockies in a little bit better of a groove than them, but of course, it, it, it we've seen it before. Wow, the, hey, the Rockies! Wow, they're an interesting first inning coming out, and then it gets into a bit of a groove, and things start cooling off for the Rockies. Dallas Keuchel is not a great pitcher. Coors Field is not a welcoming environment for those pitchers, and unfortunately, the Rockies' offense was not, was was unable to do much against a, a a struggling starter and and that's something that disappoints me as well but not nearly as disappointing not even close to as disappointing as this bullpen easily the most disappointing part of the Colorado Rockies uh, team this year easily the weakest part of the Colorado Rockies uh, uh, team this year and another disappointing night for the Rockies bullpen especially when it comes to letting down their starting pitcher. We're going to talk about that and more coming up on segment number two of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Booking.com. This episode of (laughs) Booking.com. This episode of Locked on Rockies is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, with summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, we're talking about your rivals' favorite cities like the like L.A., like Arizona, like uh, San Diego. Nice part about the NL West, good places to travel to. With hotels, bed and breakfasts, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay 
even in those NL West rival cities. You know, you, you really can't miss an opportunity to go see a beautiful baseball game and, and really any of the environments in the NL West. And Booking.com is going to make sure that you are on the right track. And guess what? They have hotels that overlook stadiums to family-friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel for Major League Baseball this season. The right stay can make you a fan of any u.s city even your rivals book today on booking.com that's booking.com on the site or on the booking.com app we are also brought to you by game time game time is the best spot for you to go get your tickets especially if you're thinking that eh, maybe i don't want to go maybe i can't maybe it's this maybe it's that Maybe you need a last second ticket. Game time has got you covered. And uh, maybe it's a last second idea to go catch the Rockies. Or maybe you do decide to go take a trip and you want to go catch a ball game in a new ballpark. Well, game time's got you covered because game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. I've used game time multiple times. It's my preferred way to buy tickets. You get to have the all in pricing when you click that little button. And my favorite part, you get to see a view of your seat, not just a view of your seat, but a 360 degree panoramic view of your seat so you really know exactly what you're getting and game time is going to credit you 110 percent of the difference if you find a lower price there so check out game time and take the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms do apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-m-l-b for 20 dollars off Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, you're in the right spot because that's what we do around here. And uh, check us out. Hey, if you are listening on audio, would love if you dropped a, a review on the streaming service of choice. Those definitely help as well. Same with subscribing, liking the videos. And uh, hey, a reminder, check out Locked On Sports Today, Locked On's 24-7 sports streaming, streaming channel, bringing you all sorts of great coverage of all the wide world of sports. And if you need to catch your Rockies play-by-play -play action on the go this year, make sure that you're tuning into SiriusXM or the SiriusXM app where they got your Colorado Rockies play-by-play -play all season long. Okay, let's talk about the biggest problem with the Colorado Rockies. The biggest issue. I, I easily, this, this is the biggest problem with the Rockies. We are now learning that the not having Daniel Bard is a problem. Overworking your bullpen is a problem. The people, the players in the bullpen, the pitchers in the bullpen are the problem. I, I don't, I unfortunately can't sit here and say that my, I, I have no more confidence in Justin Lawrence, uh, which is really tough for me to say. And I, and I've brought it up before on when we've mentioned Lawrence's struggles and when we've, when we've talked about it before, there is still some time, but unfortunately, the closer of the future, the exciting, interesting arm angle, throw, weird speed, all the cool stuff. Everything I love about Justin Lawrence, unfortunately, hasn't come to fruition this year. Plain and simple, I would say Justin Lawrence is, is at the top of the list of my most disappointing Rockies in 2024. Walking in batters to, 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 to blow leads. Walking batters after having an 0-2 count. It, it, it's just unacceptable. Let's just take a look. Let's let's let just listen to the differences in the ERAs of the bullpens that we saw yesterday. The Brewers put out after these are just bullpen pitcher ERAs. Uh, Paredes, uh, let's see, let's Paredes for the Brewers one point oh eight ERA. Milner for the Brewers four point seven six. Hudson for the Brewers point nine nine. Zastrini, Zastrini, Zastri, I think I'm saying that somewhat close to right. Uh, zero ERA. Uh, McGill, 1.59 ERA. All right, let's go to the Rockies bullpen now. Ty Block, 5.21. Jalen Beeks, 4.32. Nick Mears, 6.28. Justin Lawrence, 5.16. These are relievers. 
These are bullpen players. These are bullpen pitchers that all have ERAs at or near five. And in some cases, above five. These That's unacceptable. Inexcusable. And, and again, I know it's, and, and it's, it's clear not having Daniel Bard is, is, a, is a massive impact. Even if Daniel Bard wasn't even the same, the, wasn't the same uh, closer that we had at the start of his tenure, just having Daniel Bard means that you actually have a closer. It's incredibly disappointing that this entire season, the Rockies have not been able to turn to a single person in their bullpen to close out games. You can point out to some examples. You can throw in maybe a Victor Vodnik or, or this and that. Plain and simple, the Rockies have not been able to close out games, and it's evident. Seven times, seven times this season, the Colorado Rockies have had a lead going into the ninth inning and have blown that lead and ended up losing. You take that and you flip that now, because it was six in the middle of the game yesterday, so now it's seven. You take the fact you, you take those seven wins and you add them to your win total, you become a 36 and 49 team. And I know that doesn't that, that, wow. 13 games below 500 instead of 20 games below 500 or whatever they are. What a, let's see here. 56, let's see what's that. Instead of 27 games below 500. That makes sense. I mean, anyway, I know my math isn't right. I'm recording early today. But but my point is especially a course, man. Especially a course. And I know last night's loss wasn't necessarily a, a direct result of of dink doink. We've seen the Rockies lose on dink doink singles, but the, the ninth inning pans out exactly how you, I mean you, you've seen that story seven times this season, right? And and, and more where it's Okay, here we go. Ninth inning with a lead. Oh, it's a single. Oh, it's a bad reflect, you know. And then, of course, when Mears is just about out of it, he gets Christian Yelich to explode his bat. And what happens? Ricochet can't get the game-ending double play, and they end up losing. That's unlucky, sure. But you shouldn't even be in that situation. Lockdown closers, the, uh, the uh, lockdown bullpens, the, 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 they handle, they they step up. They're ready for that one-run game. And unfortunately, the Rockies' bullpen has not been ready for the one-run game. The Rockies' bullpen has not been ready to close games. These pitchers are not closers. And that, that's what we can safely say. You know, Daniel Bard might have been, uh, you know, changing things, but but we knew he was going to close. Or at least he was going to be in that situation. And now the Rockies, again, where it's like Justin Lawrence, man, like this is your moment. Even in a lost season, this is the moment where you rise in, and, and, and you become the dominant force that we hoped you to be. The, 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 the key component to this Rockies bullpen that we thought he was going to be. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. And again, you just go and you look at the numbers. I mean, the, let's just let's just see why why is Milner's ERA so much higher compared to everyone else's? Because he's let's see how many innings has he he's all right he's pitched thirty nine innings right and he's given up twenty one earned runs in the, in that time and, and, and including uh, four home runs. This was uh, this is Hobie Milner for for the uh, Brewers. Clearly not their 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 top choice when it comes to the bullpen, but someone that's been able to 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 do enough. To hang in there even while struggling. But now you go, let's go here. We'll go to Ty Block. You know, Ty Block has thrown 57 innings and, and has given up 33 earned runs to nine home runs. I mean, it's it's and let's go here. And I know that Ty Block is has gotten some starters starts in a little bit, so he might not be the best example. Let's go Jalen Beeks here. Jalen Beeks' ERA over the last seven days is 10.8. His whip over the last seven days is 210. In 41 innings pitched, he's allowed 20 earned runs. He's given up four home runs. His white his walk to strikeout ratio is 32 to 17. And, and that's not good. <laughs> that's that's a high, that's slightly under uh the RA of Milner, but but he's 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 the exception to this Brewers bullpen. Again, 
the only person on this in, from the Brewers bullpen that pitched yesterday that had an ERA of over two, not two, not not three, not four, but two, was Milner. And, and again, Nick Mears here, thirty-eight innings, twenty-seven earned runs, twenty walks to forty-seven strikeouts. It all goes back to this: the Rockies bullpen walks so many people and they don't strike out nearly enough people and it, and they pay for it they pay the price for it i mean i these these differences these are they're not surprising but these differences in era are astounding astounding i mean these are this that's a massive gap i mean that's literally like when you're looking at it i mean the, the gap between these two bullpens is massive so when the game is on the line when you're sitting there with a two-run lead in the bottom of the ninth with only three outs to go and you can't be confident that your team can get those three outs, that's a massive problem. And I and it's something again where it's I don't know if it how the, I don't know how the Rockies address this because these are players from within the system. These are players that have been developed within the Rockies. These are players that the Rockies have been working on for a couple of seasons now. Maybe it's just the bad aura of this season or whatever, but unfortunately, the trends are not going in the right direction. And mixed in with the fact that most of these players in this bullpen are being overused and overworked. How long can Victor Vodnik go at this rate? It's it's the bullpen's such a mess, man. Such a mess. Unfortunately, I mean, and it's it's the biggest mess on the team. But 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 going back to our first segment, there the the, the offensive worries are are a problem too. Because here's the deal: even when even with the Rockies, you you think the Rockies are better at home, right? But that's not the case. Rockies are 17 and 25 at home. I mean, that is eight games below 500. This team wanted to change the narrative about itself this year, and unfortunately, they have it. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's talk about the upcoming game, and let's talk about uh, what's next for the Rockos. All coming up here in segment number three of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, unlike other apps on Pri other unlike other apps Prize Picks. It's just you against the numbers. So it's a real great way to actually test your skills, I think. It's a way where you can say, you know what? I am, I'm going to test my Rockies knowledge, my Rockies confidence, and I'm going to look and I'm going to build my player or my lineup of two to six players, and I'm going to find the stats that I believe the Rockies will do more or less. Maybe if it's uh, hits or strikeouts or walks, you can go more or less. Stay on the Brenton Doyle's hot train. Why not? there you can see all the action for yourself on prize picks and uh with the finals over the hoops action doesn't stop on prize picks women's basketball is still heating up with stars like caitlin clark and angel reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like brianna stewart and uh, and uh, Audra wilson you could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out and of course they got you covered all throughout baseball season. So go check out all the action for yourself and download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Games like last night are one of those ones where they're deflating, but now that this is the seventh time we've seen the Rockies do that this year, you, you, you kind of felt a little bit more predictable, I guess. It, it kind of felt a little bit more, I don't know, I guess the pill was a little easier to swallow because I, I wasn't necessarily flabbergasted that this team was able to do this especially against a team that just watch the brewers play watch the brewers play for the rest of the series watch the brewers every at bat i saw some people tweeting about this it wasn't as if the brewers were doing everything it wasn't as if the brewers were just total domination and everything but now 
it's back to back double digit hit games for for the Brewers. And when you mix it in and, and you mix in the factor of that team had incredible patience throughout not only the game, but especially in the ninth inning. That team came in and looked prepared. That team came in and looked like they understood the assignment and they understood and had some preparation of saying, all right, this is a tight ball game. We're going up against a bad bullpen. Use and get your opportunities. And what do they do? They do exactly that. They do just enough to keep putting themselves in, in, in the game and just enough to keep the pressure on the Rockies throughout that entire time. The bullpen. Nick Mears, two walks, crucial late walks. You cannot be walking batters in the ninth inning. It's absolutely unacceptable, especially at Coors Field. And that's and, 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 it's, and it's how they got burned. It's how uh, Justin Lawrence lets in the winning run on a hit by a pitch on an 0-2 count or a 1-2 count, I think, at that point. But it doesn't matter. You have two strikes. The game has to be put away. The game is when the game is put into your hands. You have to step up. And like I said, when you look at the differences, when you look at a 51-win Brewers team, when you look at a division leader in the Brewers, when you look at these other good teams that the Rockies play and lose to, that's the prime example. They're prepared, they're ready, and they go up there knowing that they can handle business and get the job done. The Rockies don't have that. The Rockies don't go up. They don't look confident the Rockies don't feel confident the confidence is not spreading throughout the lineup the confidence is not spreading throughout the bullpen because you can't fault Ryan Feltner six hits one run uh one earned run two walks three strikeouts over five innings Ryan Feltner did his job in a place that he has notoriously struggled at you got to get the job done and and again, that's where it trickles down to my frustrations with the front office, the front off, the, and the organization as a whole. When I watch the Brewers, when I watch good teams, when I watch these teams that have uh, not all of them, I know, but when I watch the division leaders and the playoff teams play the Rockies and play the Rockies when they have a ch a chance to steal the game in the ninth. They are putting themselves in the best position to do so. They understand that the Rockies are a weaker team. They understand that the Rockies have a weaker bullpen. They understand the, the situation that they are in. They don't look outmatched. The problem with the Rockies is they consistently look outmatched. And then when you compare the numbers, we went through the year. I know ERA isn't the only thing for bullpen pitchers, but just the, the staggering differences and ERA between the bullpens of these two teams tell the story or at least back up the story. The problems with the Rockies are massive and the gap between them and the good teams is large, is big. And I, I really, I mean, they have to, through the second half, the best, the, the best sign of improvement we can see for the second half of this bullpen is they win those games last night. They shut the door and they get the Rockies the one run lead, uh, the one run win in the ninth. Because until you can count on them to do that, games like last night are going to continue to happen. I don't think it's unlikely that the Rockies finish the season with ten win ten games where they had a lead in the ninth that they lost. If they've done it seven times in the first half of the season, who's to say they won't do it another seven more? Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, go check out Locked on MLB. Or if you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs, all available free and streaming as well. Uh, we'll be back in action there. I think we'll be back tomorrow for the holiday. We'll double check. Uh, we'll let you know. But folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.